Episode 161 Awkward Family Gathering Woof woof! From the side came the excited barking of the big Samoyed. Thinking about how they did everything in front of the big dog, who intently watched them the entire time, Scarlet felt a bit self conscious. Drive well! Scarlet slapped Oliver's hard chest. When she hit him with her palm, she was the one who felt pain. Upon seeing her angry face, Oliver's thin lips curled slightly. He grabbed her fingers and kissed them. While they'd been making out earlier, Oliver had noticed Jamie's black Lamborghini through the one-way window as it passed by. And that was why, at that moment, he deliberately did something so that Scarlet would make a sound. Oliver! Scarlet's shy and angry voice was next to his ear. She wanted to pull her own hand away, but she did not realize how coquettish her voice was right now. Oliver laughed softly and hugged Scarlet again. He kissed her on the corner of her mouth. Got it. Drive properly. He let Scarlet go and carefully fastened her seatbelt before sitting back down. He pushed away the dog's head that had reached between the two of them and started the engine. The car quickly headed up the mountain road. When they passed a black Lamborghini parked on the side of the road, Oliver deliberately slowed down the car. He pursed his lips and said to Scarlet, in all seriousness, Don't they have any decency? Why don't they get a room? Scarlet blushed. This thick-skinned man. How could he forget what they were doing just moments ago? Scarlet did not want to see Oliver's confident face at this moment. She turned her head to look outside the window but was stunned for a moment. She immediately recognized that car. It was Jamie's. This road led to the Steele family villa, but it also led to the Walton family villa. However, seeing Jamie's car at this hour and knowing what the people inside were doing, Scarlett did not feel anything. A sharp pain suddenly came from her waist. Scarlett turned her head in anger and met Oliver's narrowed eyes. There was danger in them. Are you unhappy? Scarlet did not react to his words. She just snorted and turned her head away. You're not happy to see that guy with other women. Oliver repeated. Oliver! Scarlet was finally angry. She turned her head and suddenly pulled the hand holding her and bit it like a feral cat. What the hell are you talking about? A deep bite mark quickly appeared on Oliver's hand, between his thumb and index finger. Scarlet looked at the man driving after she had vented her anger. There were street lamps every ten meters. The dim yellow light cast a faint shadow on Oliver's face. The face that had been gentle a moment ago became fierce again. The side of his face was cold. She bit her lips. She didn't know what to say. She just felt anxious and wronged. The atmosphere in the car was a bit awkward all the way to the garden of the Steele family villa. When Arthur received Oliver's call in the afternoon, his nostrils flared. What? You want to bring her with you? Who said you could do that? We haven't agreed to the two of you being together yet. Arthur was furious. Beside him, his wife, Catherine, who was gracefully arranging flowers, cast a sidelong glance at him. Arthur looked as if he had been cursed all of a sudden. His tone immediately changed. Then remember to pick Scarlet up after work. Don't keep her waiting. After saying that, Arthur immediately hung up the phone. He was still a little depressed. If his wife weren't beside him, he definitely wouldn't have agreed to have Scarlet come to visit them. Although he was thinking this, he quickly went upstairs under his wife's gaze. Kathy, hurry up and come with me. Help me take a look at the clothes I bought last time. I seem to have gained some weight recently. I don't know if I can put them on. With that, he went straight into the bedroom. Catherine's lips curled into a faint smile. She put down the flowers and slowly went upstairs. When the car arrived at the garden of the Steele family villa... Arthur, dressed in a suit, was already waiting outside. Tristan followed behind him. When the car arrived in front of the two of them, 
Oliver stepped on the brakes and stopped. Then he got out of the car. He was also dressed in a black suit. Under it, he was wearing a white shirt and a dark green tie. It made him look taller. There was no expression on his face, and it seemed that something was bothering him. Arthur saw the expression on his face. It was very arrogant. It was as if the whole world owed him money. He was not used to it. Oliver walked forward without even greeting his grandfather. Arthur felt offended. Is this how you treat your grandfather? Oliver, your older brother is here. Be careful, lest I make him do something to your company. Whatever. Oliver shrugged. Arthur was furious. He went to see Tristan. Did you see that? You're his brother. Why did you let him become so arrogant? Tristan's eyes landed on the car that Oliver was driving. He said calmly, Grandpa, Oliver has not listened to me for ages. Then he looked at Oliver. Didn't you say you're coming with Scarlet? Where is she? Arthur looked at his grandson's back, which suddenly froze. He narrowed his eyes and quickly turned back. As Scarlet sat in the car, she heard the entire conversation between Oliver, his brother, and his grandfather. She felt that there was no way to avoid this. She pushed open the door and got out of the car. I'm here. Episode 162 Dinner with the Steels. Arthur looked at his grandson, who had not turned around, then looked at Scarlet's disheveled appearance. Several ideas crossed his mind. Scarlet, on the other hand, felt offended when she saw Oliver ignore her and walk away. She wanted to ignore him as well. She was planning to leave as soon as everyone returned to the house. But in the end, she could not do that. Scarlet adjusted her clothes, but it didn't help much. Her shirt and skirt were already wrinkled. When she got out of the car, Scarlet felt her legs go soft. She tried hard to stabilize herself so she would not look like a klutz in front of Oliver's family. She nodded at Arthur and Tristan with embarrassment. Mr. Steele? Vice Mayor Steele? It's nice to see you again. Arthur saw that Scarlet's eyes were slightly red. He then looked at his grandson and glared at him. Why did you leave Scarlet in the car? At this moment, Arthur had wholly forgotten his dissatisfaction with Scarlet. Instead, he focused his ire on Oliver. Oliver's eyes were indifferent. Under the illumination of the lanterns, his eyes were cold. I forgot. Scarlet tightly clenched her fists. She nodded at the two of them. Today's visit was at such short notice. I think it will be better to visit some other time. I'm sorry, Mr. Steele. Vice Mayor Steele. She turned around to leave, but Oliver's expression became even darker. Tristan looked at his brother's face and shook his head. He stopped Scarlet. Miss Sanders, you're already here. Let's go in and sit for a while. The housekeeper has already prepared the dishes you like. Oliver called in advance so she could prepare them. Scarlet turned around and stopped in her tracks. She looked toward the man not far away and saw that his face was gloomy. Oliver turned around and frowned at Tristan. You talk too much. Then he turned around and walked toward the villa inside. After he left, the sound of children's laughter came from the villa. She could hear a child asking, Is Scarlet here? Where is she? Where is she? Soon after, Ezra ran to Scarlet. You really came? I thought my uncle was lying to me. Seeing his sparkling eyes flashing with excitement and joy, Scarlet's heart eased up a lot. She bent down and took out a tissue to help Ezra wipe his nose. Why are you running so fast? Because I'm afraid you'll leave again. Ezra went to hold Scarlet's hand and pulled her inside. Let's go. Camilla just brought out all the food to the table. Ha! Huh. Tonight you can sit next to me. Ezra held Scarlet's hand and pulled Scarlet behind him enthusiastically. Scarlet quickly swallowed her words and let Ezra lead her into the villa. Upon entering the villa, 
Scarlet saw Catherine and Shannon standing not far from the door. Scarlet nodded at Oliver's grandmother. Mrs. Steele? When she looked at Shannon, she paused and called out, Shannon. When Shannon heard that Scarlet and Oliver were together after the divorce, she was not surprised. She said gently, Come in. As for Catherine, she just nodded at Scarlet. Shannon saw that her son was very close to Scarlet and did not stop him. Seeing the expression on Scarlet's face, she thought that Scarlet was intimidated by Oliver's grandmother. She whispered, Don't worry. My grandmother has always been like this. Actually, she likes you very much. Scarlet was a little surprised. She remembered that she did not have much contact with the old lady. Shannon seemed to know what she was thinking and softly said, Although Grandpa is in charge of the family, he loves Grandma so much and always listens to her. Getting Grandpa to agree to things rather quickly was due in no small part to Grandma's influence. Scarlet let out a sigh of relief, but at the same time, her heart tightened. Oliver. She followed the direction Ezra was taking her and saw the man who was already sitting in the dining room. The Steele family villa was huge. The dining hall alone was the size of an ordinary house. Oliver sat elegantly in the exquisite dining room. He had taken off his coat and was only wearing a white shirt. The sleeves of his shirt were folded, revealing his muscular forearms. He was smoking a cigarette at this moment. The smoke lingered around his handsome face, giving him a certain mystique. As soon as he entered the dining room, Arthur said unhappily to Oliver, If you want to smoke, go out and smoke. Don't you know your grandma doesn't like that smell? Oliver didn't argue with Arthur. Instead, he quickly extinguished the cigarette and let the housekeeper take the ashtray. When Arthur entered the room, he said in a low voice, This is outrageous. Oliver sat there with a cold expression, as if he did not hear anything. Arthur wanted to say something, but when he saw his wife looking at him, he immediately walked toward her and took a seat next to her. Scarlet was pulled by Azra toward the dining table. When she walked to Oliver's side, a hand suddenly reached out from the side and wrapped around Scarlet's waist, not letting her continue forward. Azra was a little unhappy. Uncle, although Scarlet is your friend, she's my distinguished guest today. It was already very rude of you not to bring her in today. Why do you still want to hold her back? Your guest? Oliver narrowed his eyes. He was talking to Ezra, but he was looking straight at Scarlet. Scarlet turned her head away and did not look at him. Yes, I've always wanted to invite her to my house as my guest. She just happened to come today. Ezra looked happy and proud. Oliver saw the two of them holding hands. There was a trace of displeasure in his eyes. He snatched Scarlet away from Ezra's hand and pulled her to the chair next to him. The dining room was quiet for a moment. Oliver! Scarlet wanted to struggle, but when she remembered that Oliver's family was watching, she decided not to make a scene. Her irritation, however, was visible on her face. Seeing that Ezra was angry, Tristan said to him, Ezra, sit next to Miss Sanders and help her put some food on her plate. One sentence extinguished Ezra's anger. Scarlet felt awkward, but she was also angry at Oliver. Oliver ignored everyone's gaze and started cutting the eggplant on his plate. Noticing that Scarlet was looking at him, he turned his head and raised his eyebrows at her. You want me to put some on your plate? Scarlet's face was red from embarrassment. She quickly started to eat without looking at the man beside her. But 163. Jealousy rears its ugly head again. Very quickly, Ezra became lively again. He started to put food on Scarlet's plate nonstop. This stick is delicious. Give it a try. Here, have some more cob salad. Also, try the chicken tortilla soup. Did you try Camilla's apple pie? It's the best. 
Ezra's cheerful voice could be heard over the dining room. Scarlet was happy for Ezra's antics because they shifted attention away from her. Otherwise, she did not know how she would have managed. Scarlet picked up the chicken tortilla soup in front of her and was about to raise her head to take a sip, when suddenly she felt a dry and hot hand feeling up her thigh under the table. Oliver was doing the same trick again. Because of the earlier shenanigans in the car, Scarlet was not wearing stockings. When she sat down, her pencil skirt slightly went up, so Scarlet was sitting with her legs crossed. Oliver's hand kept moving up until it was about to slide under her skirt. Scarlet's body suddenly trembled, and she spilled some soup onto her clothes. She cried out in surprise and was about to stand up when she lost her balance and fell onto Oliver's lap. Oliver frowned and said, somewhat unhappily, No matter how you stand, you can't stand steadily. But then he stood up leisurely. He did not forget to put his arm around Scarlet's waist and said to everyone who was already speechless, Her clothes are dirty. I'll take her to the washroom. After speaking, he hugged Scarlet and walked toward the washroom on the first floor. Everyone just looked at them in silence. When they reached the washroom, Scarlet heard Oliver close the door behind her and lock it. She struggled violently in his arms. Oliver, you asshole! What are we doing down here? First, he left her in the car, and now this? If you're unhappy with me, just say it. I'm not shamelessly pestering you. If you don't want to be with me anymore, I promise to leave immediately and not bother you again. Scarlet became more and more agitated as he spoke, and her eyes turned redder. Oliver's eyes turned red when he saw her reaction. His thin lips were tightly pursed. Suddenly, he kissed her on the lips passionately. Scarlet tried to resist, but couldn't break free. So she bit him ruthlessly until she tasted blood on her lips. At that point, Oliver heavily spanked Scarlet's butt and pulled back. His eyes slightly narrowed and his voice was cold. Do you know what you did wrong? Scarlet was a little stunned and did not know what was going on. The next moment, he spanked her on her butt again and said to her in his deep voice, You still dare to look at me like this? You want me to do it right here, huh? Scarlet shivered. She had already experienced Oliver's strength. However, after being spanked twice on her butt, she felt a little embarrassed and annoyed. She tried to push him, but he held her in place with his strong, muscular arms. I really want to lock you up at home at all times. His voice was low and deep. Scarlet thought it was very pleasant to listen to, but when she heard it now, she felt helpless. Oliver! Ezra is just a child! Oliver sneered. He's also a man. You're simply unreasonable! Scarlet bit her lips. If you don't like me coming here, I will leave immediately! Why do you need to find all kinds of excuses to bully me? In the afternoon, it was all flowers and chocolate. Now, he was entirely a different person. Scarlet wanted to open the bathroom door, but Oliver held her from behind. Do you admit to doing something wrong? Do you feel bad about it? Scarlet was stunned and felt even more uncomfortable. She remained silent and did not move. Oliver frowned slightly and pulled Scarlet. He saw that she was crying silently at this moment. Her shoulders twitched slightly and her head was lowered. She did not want to face the man in front of her. Oliver frowned even more. I did not bully you. Why are you crying? I feel like crying. What's wrong with that? Scarlet quickly raised her hand to wipe her tears. She hated herself for agreeing to come to the Steele family villa tonight. Now she was stuck in a dilemma. Being trapped in this washroom made her feel terrible. Her eyes and nose were red. She looked pitiful. Oliver's heart softened. He kissed her forehead. It's all right. Let's go back to dinner. You can eat if you like. Scarlet clenched her fists. Her eyes were desolate. I will leave tonight. 
you go and tell everyone. She lowered her head and was about to open the bathroom door, but Oliver pulled her into his arms again. Something flashed through his eyes, and he said in a low voice, Well, I was wrong. It's time to go out for dinner now, isn't it? His eyes were gloomy and uncertain, but his tone was still relaxed. Scarlet felt even more distressed. What's wrong with you? My relationship with Jamie for so many years is indeed not so easily broken. So when I saw them in the car today, I was so mad. Oliver's expression became much darker. He tightened his hand around her waist. Don't say that just to anger me, Scarlet. I don't know what I'll do if you keep talking like that. What will you do? Do you want to hit me or scold me? It's useless. I'm completely loyal to that man. When you treat me like this, I like him even more. Scarlet. Oliver suddenly interrupted her. Scarlet could see Oliver's somber face in the mirror. She realized that she had never seen him like this before, except when he saved her life at the construction site. Thinking of the time when he came to save her, she suddenly could not help but hit Oliver's chest heavily. What do I have to say to make you believe me? I don't like that man at all. If I liked him, how could I be with you? Scarlet was crying. She wanted to leave a good impression on Oliver's family today, but the atmosphere had probably been ruined by now. The veins on Oliver's forehead were throbbing. Seeing her crying moved him. He tightly wrapped his arms around her waist, and his voice softened. All right, all right. I was being unreasonable today. Don't cry anymore, hmm? If you don't want to eat anymore, we'll leave this place and go home, okay? His voice was much gentler, and his tone was low. Gradually, it comforted Scarlet. She tightly grabbed his white shirt and was just about to say something. Suddenly, the bathroom door was opened from the outside. 164. Because he loves you. Oliver looked up annoyedly and saw Tristan looking at the two of them indifferently. Grandpa wants you to come back for dinner. He says everyone is waiting for you downstairs. When Scarlet heard the door open, she buried her embarrassed face into Oliver's chest without thinking. When she heard Tristan's voice, her ears turned red, but her body was stiff in Oliver's arms. Oliver patted her back and said to Tristan, Got it. Seeing that Tristan was still standing in the doorway, Oliver narrowed his eyes. Is there anything else? Tristan raised his eyebrows and looked at Scarlet. His shrewd eyes looked into his brother's eyes. Suddenly, he curled his thin lips. Nothing much. I just want to remind you that if you want privacy, you should keep your voice down. That one sentence made Scarlet's body stiffen even more. Oh, God. She hadn't thought of that when she was shouting earlier. Tristan's words clearly conveyed that the people outside had heard everything. She was angry, anxious, and embarrassed. Her body trembled slightly as well. Oliver understood Scarlet's feelings at this moment and gave his brother a look. Tristan shrugged his shoulders and turned around to leave. He did not forget to close the bathroom door behind him. Oliver, look at what you've done! Scarlet came out of the man's chest as soon as the door was closed. She lowered her voice, but could not help being angry. Oliver held her waist. What did I do? You... Scarlet wanted to push him, but was tightly held by him. Her other hand was placed in front of her thin lips. Shh! If you continue messing around, your family will hear us! She struggled in his arms. I want to wash my face! Only then did Oliver let go of her slightly but he followed closely behind her. Scarlet glared at him. Oliver raised his eyebrows and casually handed her a facial cleanser. This belongs to Grandma. You can use it. Scarlet hesitated for a moment. She had to wash the makeup that had gotten smudged from crying. After she cleaned her face, Oliver handed her a towel. Scarlet took it. 
When she wiped her face, she smelled a familiar smell. It was very nice. She turned her head and looked at the man beside her before putting it back in its original place. Knowing that she could not avoid going out and facing that group of people again, Scarlet tidied herself up a little before she braced herself and walked out of the washroom. Oliver held her waist as they walked out of the bathroom. Scarlet could not struggle out, so she simply let him do as he pleased. There was no expression on his face. It was as if he had done nothing with Scarlet in the washroom. Fortunately, although everyone heard their quarrel, they did not show it. Everyone carried on as if there was no interruption and nothing had happened. The meal was over quickly. Once dinner was over, Shannon took Ezra to the living room to watch TV. No one talked about her relationship with Oliver. Soon, the atmosphere became more relaxed. Oliver, however, did not seem relaxed. After Arthur finished his meal, he called Oliver to the study room and scolded him. Scarlet's heart tightened when she heard the sound of an ashtray hitting the floor upstairs. She looked upstairs in fear. Shannon also looked upstairs. She smiled at Scarlet and said, Don't feel sorry for Oliver. He deserves that. When she heard Shannon's words, she felt guilty and lowered her head. I just don't want them to fight. Don't worry, it'll be over quickly. These last few years, I've lost count of how many ashtrays Grandpa smashed while talking with Oliver. One time, he gave him a gash over his eyebrow that required a few stitches. What? Scarlet gasped. How did that happen? I think Grandpa had arranged a blind date for Oliver. But when he saw her, he just told her to get lost. Shannon shook her head. It was all ten years ago. At that time, Oliver was really rebellious. She looked at Scarlet. Don't look at how mature and steady he is now. He's still arrogant and unruly sometimes. So when I found out he was in love with you, I knew he'll find a way to have you. I know that his domineering attitude might make you uncomfortable at times, but it's all because he loves you. Both women had been through bad marriages. When they talked about men, they understood each other instinctively. Pleasant emotions welled up in Scarlet's heart. She knew that Oliver cared about her. But sometimes, she just couldn't put up with his attitude. Oh, I know. Scarlet took a deep breath and smiled at Shannon. Scarlet, look! I made you a fruit salad! Ezra took out a fruit platter from the kitchen and ran toward Scarlet. Shannon saw her son's look and could not help but laugh. She felt that the lecture upstairs was almost done. She patted her son's shoulder. Ezra, go to bed. You have to get up early and go to school tomorrow. Oh, okay. Ezra was a little reluctant, but he still listened to his mother. He did not forget to tell Scarlet... Scarlet, you must remember to eat. Okay. Scarlet looked at Ezra and smiled. D5. It's just the two of us. When Oliver came down from upstairs, he saw Scarlet sitting alone on the sofa in the living room, eating a fruit salad. When he came out of the study, his face was a little somber. When he came down to her side, his expression became much better. He sat on the sofa and hugged Scarlet's shoulder. He kissed her on the cheek. His low voice lingered in Scarlet's ear. What are you watching? There was a talent show on television. When Oliver hugged Scarlet's face, there was a faint smile on the corner of her mouth. She carefully looked at the man beside her. Seeing that he was not hurt, she looked relieved. You finally came down. His eyes narrowed. Did you miss me? Yes, Scarlet said without hesitation. Oliver's breath tightened. He held her tightly in his arms, and his voice became much more hoarse. Grandma wants us to stay here tonight. Scarlet was stunned. It seemed like the Steele family had already acknowledged her as Oliver's girlfriend. She was afraid that she had left a bad impression on them tonight. She smiled and snuggled into Oliver's embrace. 
I'll listen to you. When Scarlet's warm and soft body fell into his embrace, Oliver was momentarily stunned. He probably did not expect Scarlet to change her temperament so quickly. He gently lifted her chin, making her beautiful eyes meet his. There were many emotions in her eyes. What do you think? Scarlet's face turned red. She turned her head away. If you don't like it, then let's leave. No matter how cool she pretended to be, she could not resist staring at his handsome face. She heard a low, deep voice in her ear. Oliver pulled her into his arms and made her sit on his lap. Oliver, we're not alone. Afraid that he would do something sexual, Scarlet's face turned red. She did not dare to speak loudly. She only dared to speak to the man in front of her in a low voice. Do you know that Grandma did not prepare a guest room for you? He bit Scarlet's earlobe and said in a hoarse voice. Scarlet did not react immediately. When she realized what he meant, her eyes widened. Oliver laughed again. When he smiled, his chest shook slightly. Scarlet knew that he had said it on purpose for her to hear. But if Catherine really did not prepare a room for her, then she had to sleep in his room. She blushed. Then I'll ask Camilla if she can prepare a guest room for me. Prepare a guest room? Oliver tied her waist tightly and narrowed his eyes dangerously. Scarlet did not dare to look into Oliver's eyes again. There seemed to be two small flames dancing in those eyes at the moment. Feeling the danger of the man in front of her, Scarlet bit her lips and suddenly kissed his lips. Stop messing around, okay? Let's watch TV. There are so many people in your house. If you continue messing around, I wouldn't be able to show my face here the next time. Her kiss carried a bit of flattery. It was intended to appease the man in front of her. At this moment, she was like a docile kitten, coddling in his arms and acting coquettishly. Oliver suddenly grabbed Scarlet firmly and lowered his head. His thin lips landed on her pink lips. Her kiss was as passionate as his own. Very quickly, Oliver started unbuttoning her shirt. Scarlet did not notice for a moment. When she reacted, she hurriedly pushed Oliver's thin lips that landed on her neck. Oliver! We agreed to watch TV! What are you doing? Oliver's eyes became gloomy. Do you really just want to watch TV? Scarlet's body became hot and soft. She did not know whether to laugh or cry as she whispered. You stud! She quickly put on her clothes again. It was just that, after everything that went on tonight, her clothes were now in such a sorry state. He had torn a button on her shirt just now. Now that she looked at it, it somehow made her figure look more curvaceous. Oliver's eyes became much darker, and he said in a dull voice, When Grandpa came out of the study just now, he went straight back to the bedroom. Scarlet felt her heart heat up when she saw his eyes. She forced herself to calm down. And then? My grandparents don't come out at night. My sister and nephew don't get up at night either. As for Tristan, we can just ignore him. Oliver looked straight at Scarlet. Those eyes were as deep as the sea at the moment, and it seemed like there was a whirlpool that wanted to suck Scarlet in. Suddenly feeling thirsty, Scarlet pushed Oliver. Don't lean on me like that. It's too early. If you don't want to watch TV with me, go and take care of your work first. Scarlet remembered that he had been very busy recently. When Oliver heard her last sentence, his face immediately darkened. He had heard of women complaining that their husbands worked too much. Yet, here was Scarlet pushing him to work instead of asking him to spend more time with her. She saw Oliver frown all of a sudden. Scarlet's heart softened, and she shook his arm. Why don't you sit with me and watch this talent show? This episode seems very fun, okay? Scarlet had never acted coquettishly to anyone before. She looked at Oliver with her big, beautiful eyes, 
without blinking. Oliver's eyes narrowed slightly. He turned his head and looked at the scene on television. A group of men and women were playing a game together. He pursed his thin lips. This is boring. How about another one? Scarlet put the remote control into his hand and looked like she was going to switch channels with him. Oliver turned his head and looked at Scarlet again. Seeing her eyes full of expectation, something flashed in his eyes. He tossed the remote aside. I think I have a few DVDs in the car. I'll get a horror movie. Let's watch that. Scarlet did not mind. She often watched horror films with Riley. No matter how terrifying it was, she would tell herself it wasn't real. Suddenly, she remembered something, and her eyes widened. Oliver, where's Daphne? Did you forget her in the car? Oliver looked at her with a faint smile. Now you remember it. After the fight Scarlet had with Oliver, she forgot all about Daphne. She felt a little embarrassed. Don't worry, Oliver said as he left the room. Camilla has left her in the garden. Scarlet heaved a sigh of relief. 166. The gift that keeps on giving. Oliver returned very quickly. He had a bag in his hand. The bag seemed familiar, but Scarlet could not remember it for a while. When Oliver went out, he smoked a cigarette. When he came back, he was casually holding a cigarette in his hand. He was still wearing his white shirt and black pants. Even when he was at home, he looked handsome. As he slowly walked into the room, Scarlet looked at his slightly narrowed eyes, and her heart suddenly started beating faster. She hurriedly turned her eyes away and looked at the television in front of her. Don't make so much noise. Your grandparents are sleeping upstairs. A smile appeared in Oliver's eyes. He nodded seriously and said, Yes. Oliver held the cigarette butt in his mouth and faced Scarlet. In the curling smoke, Scarlet felt that her sight could not leave Oliver's handsome face. Without noticing it, she gulped silently. The sofa was very spacious, but Scarlet still moved aside to make some space for him. The man immediately sat right beside her and pulled her into his arms. Scarlet smelled the fragrance on his body and suddenly felt at ease. In the movie that Scarlet and Oliver were watching, a man and a woman were having an argument. The woman cried and wanted to leave, but the man chased and hugged her. He coaxed her as he brought her back home. The movie seemed to have low production quality, but Scarlet didn't mind. She was just happy that Oliver was watching it with her. Oliver's hand wrapped around her waist and hugged her tighter. In the movie, things quickly escalated between the man and the woman, and they suddenly started kissing each other passionately. This went on for several minutes. Finally, Scarlet couldn't take it anymore. She tugged on Oliver's shirt and bit her lips. Didn't you say it was a horror movie? Oliver's eyes were dark. He said softly, but in a low voice, Yeah, it's called Dawn of the Head. I think it's a famous horror movie. Oliver glanced sideways and noticed that Scarlet didn't suspect anything. He suddenly leaned toward her and kissed her delicate lips. He said softly to Scarlet, It's all right if you don't like it. I can try another one. Scarlet hurriedly said, Okay. Oliver got up and inserted another disc into the DVD player. This time, it was 28 lays later. Since his back was to her, Scarlet did not notice the smile on Oliver's face as he set up the DVD player. Very quickly, he walked back. This time, he directly pulled Scarlet into his arms. Scarlet still wanted to struggle, but he scolded her softly. Stop messing around. It will start soon. Scarlet's ears were a little red. Sitting on his legs like that, she felt embarrassed in case someone came downstairs. No one will come down, trust me. And we are a couple. This is normal for us. Don't worry. Scarlet would have struggled more, but she didn't want to get off his lap either. After the opening credits, the movie started. The movie? 
something was really odd about it. Scarlet immediately looked down and saw the bag the DVDs were in. That bag? Wasn't this bag in the box that Riley bought for me? Is there a problem? Oliver asked with an innocent look on his face. Looking at his innocent eyes, Scarlet felt powerless. Oliver! You definitely did it on purpose! How could these be real horror movies? Oliver pursed his thin lips. Scarlet, you have wrongly accused me. At this moment, a loud moan came from the television. Unlike in the previous movie, this one wasted no time getting to the point. Given the movie's name was 28 Lays Later, this came as no surprise. Scarlet bit her lips and her eyes widened. Uh, quickly, turn that off! Turn that off! If anyone came downstairs right now, it would be so embarrassing. Oliver narrowed his sharp eyes and hugged her even tighter. It will be over very soon. What do you mean? The film just started! Scarlet pinched Oliver's waist hard. Go and throw away these DVDs! If you don't, I'll sleep in the guest room tonight! Seeing the stubborn look in her eyes, Oliver's face turned a little sour. He put her back on the sofa and walked out of the room. He took care of the DVDs and was about to take them upstairs when he heard a phone ringing. He looked around and saw it was Scarlett's phone. Who could be calling at this hour? Episode 167 You Turn Me On Like a Light Switch Narrowing his eyes, Oliver stopped walking toward the stairs. He walked around the coffee table, picked up Scarlett's bag from the sofa, and took out her phone. Although the caller ID didn't show any name, Oliver recognized the number. A cold glint flashed across his eyes. He accepted the call and said faintly, Hello? The person on the other side didn't say anything and quickly hung up the phone. Oliver had a mocking smile on his face. He played with the phone for a while. He seemed to have an idea. Then he held the phone in his hand and went up to the bedroom on the second floor. Scarlet had already entered the bathroom. The sound of water coming from the bathroom was a little loud. Oliver casually threw the bag with the DVDs onto the sofa in front of the bed. Then he took out Scarlet's phone and placed it in front of the bedside table before going to take a shower in the guest room's bathroom. Being early autumn, the weather in the morning was still hot, but at night, it got a bit cold. At this moment, Scarlet was wrapped in a thin blanket as she lay on the bed. Oliver laughed lightly. He smiled and saw that Scarlet's back was bare. As he walked toward her, small water droplets fell from his chest onto the ground. A towel was wrapped tightly around his lower body. Seeing that Scarlet did not turn back, he went straight to bed. Feeling someone in the bed behind her, Scarlet became nervous. She tightly pulled on the thin blanket. Finally, the man behind her gradually came closer and pulled her to himself. This time, she was not flipped over by the man. He only hugged her body from behind. He planted a hot kiss on her neck. When he felt Scarlet's body tremble, Oliver laughed in a low voice. You dress like this on purpose, he said. Huh? Scarlet had just come out of the bathroom and searched everywhere for a while. In the end, she only found Oliver's white shirt. She could barely change into it. She did not bring any clothes to change into. However, she wasn't comfortable sleeping naked. So she wrapped herself tightly in a thin blanket. Scarlet's ears turned red when she heard Oliver's words. She struggled symbolically and pretended to be calm. Stop messing around. I want to sleep. You always like to joke. Oliver used his chin to stroke Scarlet's shoulder. But his hand pressed something on Scarlet's phone before he turned his attention back to her. He laughed in a low voice. Scarlet, do you like it when I treat you like this? Oliver, why are you so naughty today? Oliver kissed her ear and laughed softly. What can I do? You just turn me on, like a light switch. After saying that, 
he could no longer hold himself. It was only after the room was at peace that Oliver brushed aside Scarlet's hair and pulled her into his arms to kiss her forehead. His eyes could not hide the joy in his heart. He thought of something, and his eyes flashed. He casually picked up the phone that he had deliberately placed beside the pillow. The person he called earlier had already hung up. Oliver casually tossed the phone back onto the bedside table. His gaze suddenly focused on the right shoulder of the woman in his arms. The skin there should have been delicate and white, but at this moment, it was covered by an ugly scar. Even though it was caused a long time ago, it was still visible if one wore sleeveless clothes. As he had thought of something, Oliver's face darkened. He lowered his head again and kissed the faint scar. Scarlet felt the man's kiss and her body shrank. She whispered, No. Her eyes were full of fatigue. Oliver looked at her pitiful appearance and hugged her even tighter. His breath was a little unsteady as he said, Don't think about that kid anymore. At the same time, a black Lamborghini was parked outside the Steele family villa. When Jamie saw Oliver's car on the mountain road and heard Scarlett's voice coming from inside, he felt like he was possessed. After sending Adriana back to the villa, he said he had something to do and drove off. He then parked his car outside the Steele family villa. From the time Scarlett entered this place until now, no one left the villa. Outside the car, there were already plenty of discarded cigarette butts. When he thought of the two phone calls just now, he felt that the veins on his forehead were about to explode. He could not suppress his anger, no matter how hard he tried. The first call was picked up by Oliver, so he hung up immediately. In less than half an hour, Scarlet called him back. When he got the call, he thought Scarlet couldn't get him off her mind. However, when he picked up the phone, he heard Oliver and Scarlet talking. Scarlet, do you like it when I treat you like this? What can I do? You just turn me on, like a light switch. Scarlet, I know I'm your first, and you are my first, too. He was obviously lying. How could he have never had another woman before? All the wealthy businessmen he knew kept mistresses. To say that he had never been with someone before was ridiculous. Jamie's chest heaved up and down. His hands smashed the steering wheel fiercely. But by mistake, he hit the car horn. In the quiet night, the sound of the horn traveled very far. Could it be that someone heard it? Episode 168 What Dreams May Come Jamie threw away another cigarette and thought of the time Scarlett had just married him. At that time, she was not as desperate as she was later on in the marriage. She was the perfect wife back then. She would prepare breakfast for him first thing in the morning, and at night, she would prepare dinner for him, so that when he got back from work, there was a hot meal ready for him. She always remembered his birthday and the things he liked. She would remember everything about him, the way a lovesick teenager might have remembered minor details about her crush. Thinking about it now, he did so many things to push her over the edge. Was it really about what he thought she did to Adriana's child? Or did he just treat her badly because he wanted to be with Adriana? Jamie felt a throbbing pain in his head as he contemplated those questions. It was so painful that he bent down and coughed heavily. The cigarette fell outside the window. Those memories that he had once disdained suddenly rushed into his mind. He remembered a particular incident. Once he'd slept with a woman he'd met at a bar. Later, he had asked her to call Scarlett and tell her to pick him up. When Scarlett came, that woman was still in his arms, and they'd been lying in bed together. He remembered that when Scarlett had arrived, she'd been unusually quiet. She hadn't flipped out as he had imagined. Instead, she'd slept in the adjacent living room that night. When he woke up the next day, the woman in his arms had already left. 
Instead, he saw Scarlet looking at him with bloodshot eyes. Jamie, she said. There's an important meeting at the company. Your mother asked me to tell you to be there on time. After that, she had left. Later on, his mother had fiercely reprimanded him, but Scarlet never mentioned that incident in front of him again. She'd been a little colder than before, but she had still firmly believed in their marriage. Jamie looked at himself in the rearview mirror. If he had treated her well at that time, would she still have left so decisively? He suddenly realized why he was here. At that moment, regret crept into his heart. Jamie regretted pushing Scarlet away. Scarlet's eyes twitched as she dreamt. In the dream, she saw herself the night she met Jamie, six years ago. Riley pulled her to a bar outside the school. It was noisy and messy inside, but it seemed that Riley knew the bar owner. After they went in, they were protected by two bodyguards. With two bodyguards trailing them, no one dared to bother them. Another person, however, got into trouble that night. Adriana was harassed by some biker. The biker and Jamie started arguing, and soon they got into a fist fight. In the melee, another biker was about to smash a beer bottle on Adriana's head. Seeing that, Jamie rushed to push Adriana away. Neither of them got hurt, however, because Scarlett leaped from where she was standing next to Riley and pushed both of them out of harm's way. She, however, ended up with a nasty gash on her shoulder. The scar it left was a lifelong memento of that night. Even though it was just a dream, Scarlet could still remember the burning pain in her shoulder. Before her eyes turned black, she seemed to see a man running toward her, but before she could see who it was, she fainted. This was a lucid dream. Scarlet knew she was dreaming, but she could not change the direction of the dream. She was like a spectator watching her own life play before her eyes. After that, the scene in the dream suddenly changed. She saw Oliver standing in front of her. He was wearing a tuxedo and frowning at her. Do you still have feelings for that brat? Why do you still dream about him? He asked. Scarlet did not know what to say. She did not have any feelings for Jamie anymore. Why then was he still able to enter her dream? But there was one thing Scarlet was sure about. She hurriedly said, I don't like Jamie anymore, Oliver. Believe me. Outside of the dream, Scarlet shook her head and whispered in her sleep, I have... Jamie, I... When Scarlet woke up the next morning, Oliver was no longer by her side. She saw the clothes she was wearing yesterday folded on a nearby chair. Obviously, they had been cleaned. Scarlet felt a little hazy. For a moment, she didn't know where she was. Then, it all came back to her. She looked left and right. The blanket by the side was already cold. She figured Oliver must have been gone for some time. She quickly put on her clothes and washed up. Then she went downstairs. Downstairs, almost everyone was sitting in the dining room, except for Oliver. They all looked at her awkwardly. Azra, on the other hand, quickly ran to her when he saw her. He grabbed her hand and walked toward the dining room. Auntie Scarlet, you woke up so early. Hurry up and have breakfast. When the driver sends me to school, he said, he'll also take you to your company. Seeing how energetic he was so early in the morning, a smile appeared on Scarlet's face. That is so thoughtful of you, Ezra. But tell me, where is your uncle? You mean Uncle Oliver? Ezra rubbed his head. I don't know. It seems like something happened at work. He didn't look happy at all in the morning. He left without even having breakfast. Scarlet's brows furrowed. Miss Sanders, have breakfast before it becomes cold, Shannon said courteously. Scarlet nodded and held Ezra's hand as she walked toward the dining table. When they arrived, 
Scarlet first greeted Arthur and Catherine respectfully before taking a seat next to Shannon. Not long after, Shannon gently touched her shoulder and whispered to Scarlet, Did you fight with Oliver last night? Scarlet was stunned. No. Shannon knitted her brows. This is strange. What's wrong? Scarlet felt that even if Oliver had an urgent matter at the company, he would have sent her a text message to inform her that he would leave this morning. Shannon shook her head. It's nothing. You should call him yourself later. Maybe I was thinking too much. Scarlet's heart started to worry, and she replied, Okay. After breakfast, before she left, Catherine handed Scarlet a red velvet box and said, Take it. The old lady's tone brooked no argument. What was in the box? Scarlet hesitated. Noticing her hesitation, Shannon said, Grandma wants you to have it. Just accept it. Scarlet nodded and opened the velvet box. Inside was a dark green bracelet. The texture was crystal clear and very beautiful. She was stunned and looked at Catherine. The old lady's expression was indifferent. I wish you a good life with Oliver. Holding the box, Scarlet's heart relaxed and her expression became much gentler. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. The old lady nodded and went upstairs. Scarlet left the Steele family villa together with Ezra's driver. The driver said, I don't know who was smoking outside the villa last night. The floor is covered with cigarette butts. Scarlet did not care much. Ezra kept talking to her about things and invited her to come to the villa again soon. Auntie Scarlet, my mother said that you want to marry my uncle, right? Ezra suddenly asked. Scarlet was startled, and her face turned red. She touched his head. It's not decided yet. But my mother said that you have already accepted the gift from my great-grandmother. Ezra stared at Scarlet and said, If you accept it, you can't return it. Although his uncle was sometimes insensible and made him angry, Ezra figured that if Oliver married Scarlet, then she would always be around in the future, and he would be able to play with her more often. Scarlet thought of the red velvet box in her bag and felt happy. However, since the driver was still there and could overhear their conversation, she decided to change the topic. So, do you like Uncle Oliver? When Ezra heard Scarlet ask him this question, he coughed lightly. Most of the time. But of course, not last night. Last night, though, he must have made you unhappy. She remembered when Ezra told her he liked Oliver. Ezra pursed his lips. Grandpa said that my uncle has a bad temper. I think so, too. The two of them chatted all the way until they dropped Ezra at the entrance of his primary school. Ezra kept begging Scarlet to visit them again soon. Only after Scarlet agreed did he turn around and enter the school. He did not forget to turn around and wave at her enthusiastically. Miss Sanders, I really have never seen Ezra like someone so much. The driver casually smiled at her. It seems that you are really good with children. Scarlet smiled gently. Uh, Ezra is very cute. The driver did not say much and took Scarlet to Sanders' holding. Wow, look, that's the CEO of Steel Enterprises, Oliver Steele. Scarlet overheard that just as she walked out of the elevator in Sanders' holding. I didn't expect him to be even more handsome in real life than he is on TV. My God. I'd love to get a piece of that. <laughs> Be careful that your husband doesn't hear you say that. Scarlet stood not far from the elevator door and followed the line of sight of the gossiping employees. She saw Oliver briefly through Yana's office door before he moved out of view. What was going on? Why was Oliver here? Scarlet had called him twice that morning, but he did not pick up. She did not know if he was doing it on purpose or was really busy. She tightly held the phone in her hand and walked toward her office. 
Scarlet's office was right in front of Yana's. The frosted glass window, however, obscured what was going on inside. The door of Yana's office was tightly shut. Scarlet could roughly guess what Yana and Oliver were discussing. Sanders Holding was currently trying its best to rope in Steel Enterprises. At this moment, their topic must be related to the Hanging Gardens project. However, when Scarlet saw the tightly shut office door, she found that she was unable to concentrate on her work. She was feeling a little annoyed when someone knocked on her office door. Miss Sanders, the project department asked for the preliminary draft of the Hanging Gardens project to be sent over quickly. An important guest from Steel Enterprises wants to go over the preliminary draft. It could not be Quinn. She went for a physical examination today. Scarlet quickly packed up the first draft in front of her and said gently, I understand. I will immediately send it over. Just as she was about to leave her office, Scarlet passed by a floor-to-ceiling mirror. She stopped and adjusted her clothes, then walked out of the office. Scarlet knocked on the door and went in. It was Scarlet's first time in Yana's office. The office was decorated in a very feminine and luxurious style. She did not look at Yana, who was sitting behind the desk. Instead, she turned her gaze to the man on the sofa opposite Yana. He was dressed in a well-ironed suit and was clean and tidy. His body was tall and his posture on the sofa was somewhat casual. He was sitting with his legs crossed and holding a cigarette. At this moment, he was looking at the slowly burning cigarette. No one knew what he was thinking. His deep eyes narrowed slightly and his face was expressionless. Oliver didn't even look at her when she came in. She recalled that she was the one who told him she did not want to tell her family about their relationship yet. Nevertheless, his indifferent attitude just now rubbed her the wrong way. Seeing Scarlet personally deliver the first draft, Yana's eyes narrowed. Seeing the way she kept looking at Oliver, a trace of mockery passed through Yana's eyes. She said elegantly, it's rare for the design director to personally deliver the first draft. Just put it there. If you don't mind, can you bring our guests something to drink? Of course, Scarlet said politely. Yana's face immediately darkened. She expected Scarlet to be offended. Instead, she graciously agreed. The CEO of Steel Enterprises was actually the handsome man she had met that night in the elevator at Scarlet's apartment building. Looking at Scarlet, it was clear that she was interested in this man. Scarlet pretended not to see Yana's frown. Just as she was about to leave the office, she realized that she did not know what Oliver liked to drink. So she turned her head and looked at the expressionless man. What would you like to drink? Her voice softened as she spoke to Oliver. Yana's frown deepened. She regretted asking her to bring Oliver refreshments. She looked at the man who had not spoken since Scarlet came in. Oliver pursed his thin lips. He took off the cigarette butt he had just placed on his lips. He turned his head, looked Scarlet straight in the eyes, and said with a smile that was not a smile, Don't you know what I want to drink? Scarlet's heart skipped a beat. Oliver's smile contained too many emotions. For a moment... Scarlet could not tell what he meant. She spread the first draft on the tea table in front of Oliver and hooked the hair that fell to her cheek behind her ear. She softly asked him, How about a cup of cold brew coffee? Oliver saw Scarlet looking straight at him. Her big eyes had a trace of gentleness. He felt even more irritated. He put the cigarette butt back to his thin lips and turned away. He looked at the drawings on the coffee table and said casually, Whatever. Oliver's cold demeanor stunned Scarlet. Yana, however, smiled. Scarlet, a cup of cold brew coffee, please. Bring it in quickly. After saying that, a pair of beautiful eyes coldly stared at Scarlet. Scarlet's heart tightened. In the end, she turned around and walked out of the office. Before going out, she could hear Yana's gentle voice. 
Director Steele. You personally came to Sanders Holding to talk with me today. I'm really honored. As for the Hanging Gardens project, this time... Scarlet could not hear the rest. Scarlet soon returned holding a cup of coffee. She felt the atmosphere in the room was good. Oliver smoked while discussing the draft's problems with Yana. Meanwhile, Yana's smile illuminated the entire office. Scarlet placed the coffee next to Oliver. He did not even look up and continued talking with Yana. Looking at his indifferent attitude, Scarlet's heart felt a little stifled for a moment. She wanted to leave, but she could not bear to do so. What are you still standing here for? Yana, who had been watching her quietly, raised her head and eyebrows. Her eyes were full of ridicule. Miss Sanders, you can go out now. I want to talk to Director Steele about something important. Scarlet tightened her fists and said in a very businesslike manner, I just amended this draft yesterday. I'm afraid you might not understand some things. If I don't understand something, I'll ask you to come in and explain. How could Yana not understand what Scarlet was thinking at this moment? She glanced at the peerlessly handsome man in front of her. The smile on her face became more brilliant as she looked at Scarlet. Miss Sanders, by now your new boyfriend should have sent you more fresh flowers and chocolate, right? You should go pick them up. I'll stay here and explain the design drafts to Director Steele. Scarlet looked at Oliver when she heard the words, new boyfriend. Oliver, however, continued smoking without looking at her, as if what Yana said earlier had nothing to do with him. The two of them were getting along last night. Why did their relationship seem to have taken a step back today? Could it be that she had done something wrong last night? But last night, she was so exhausted that she fell asleep so quickly. How could she have done anything or said anything? Unless... Thinking of the dream she had last night, Scarlet's heart skipped a beat. She looked at Oliver. Could it be that when she was dreaming last night, she said something in her sleep that made him unhappy? Oliver still did not look at her. His eyes were focused on the design drawings in front of him. Scarlet's lips moved, but she did not say anything. She looked at Yana, then turned around and walked outside. She did not notice that on her way out, Oliver finally lifted his cold eyes and looked at her indifferently. Director Steele, Yana moved closer to Oliver and pointed at a part of the blueprint. This over here is one of our key strengths in Sanders holding. Let me show you. On the way back to her office, Scarlet overheard some employees whispering. What do you make of Director Steele coming here personally to discuss the project with Yana? Do you think he has his eyes on her? Another person asked. Maybe. They're discussing the Hanging Gardens project. We didn't have much hope of getting Steele Enterprises involved in the project because we're simply not qualified enough. However, if Director Steele is interested in our project director... Scarlet frowned and went straight into her office. As soon as she entered, she closed the door behind her. Thinking of how close they were last night and his starkly different attitude this morning, Scarlet figured out that she must have said something in her sleep last night. Over at Yana's office, even though Yana tried to make the meeting last longer, they finished going through the drafts all too quickly. Director Steele, this is the initial plan for the Hanging Gardens project. Of course, if you have any other suggestions, we can incorporate them into the design. I'm sure Sanders Holding will meet all the requirements of Steel Enterprises. Yana had a flawless smile on her face as she said that. She didn't know if she was imagining it, but she felt as if Oliver grew colder after Scarlet left. At this moment, it was as if he did not hear her last sentence. He just nodded and stood up. He looked at the expensive watch on his wrist and walked out. Since I have more or less understood the design drafts, it is time for me to leave. Yana quickly stood up and walked outside. She was as petite as Scarlet. When she walked beside Oliver, she realized how tall he was. He was dressed in a well-cut black suit and appeared very meticulous. His figure was very steady, 
and his natural charisma manifested in the way he carried himself. She had heard that Director Steele was not a playboy, which was quite rare among handsome high-status men. Yana could see how far better he was than Scarlett's ex-husband, Jamie. Yana thought of something and suddenly said, Director Steele, if you don't have other arrangements, why don't you come with me for lunch as a guest of Sanders Holding? When she asked this question, the two of them were at the door. Scarlet, who was just on her way to get some water from the break room, overheard Yana. She immediately looked at Oliver to see what his reaction would be. Not only Scarlet, but even Yana thought that he would turn her down. After all, Oliver was not a man who would really accept an invitation. To her surprise, however, Oliver nodded and said indifferently, Since you are so kind, I will accept your invitation. Yana was stunned for a moment before she quickly regained her senses. She looked at the mesmerizing man in front of her. Thinking about how he came to talk to her by himself and how he readily agreed to her invitation, she wondered if he was really interested in her. Without waiting for her to respond, Oliver left her office. Yana hurriedly caught up to him. When she passed by Scarlet, she did not forget to hit Scarlet's shoulder hard. Don't waste your time, Scarlet. I know you're interested in him as well, but save yourself the effort. Men like him don't even notice women like you. She quickly caught up to Oliver, and the two of them walked toward the elevator together. Scarlet slowly turned around. Oliver and Yana seemed to be talking about something in front of the elevator. Their expressions became more amiable. Scarlet could see Oliver smiling at her. She felt a stabbing pain in her eyes. She had just called Oliver twice, but he didn't pick up. When Quinn came back from her physical examination, she excitedly ran to Scarlet's office and asked her, I heard Director Steele came in the morning. You guys are definitely going to have lunch together, right? Scarlet's hands paused, and she said gloomily, He already has an appointment. An appointment? Quinn was not surprised. After all, Oliver was also very busy. It was just that... She moved closer to Scarlet. Miss Sanders, are you alright? She thought about it and said, Who upset you? Miss Sanders, tell me. I will immediately report to Prince Charming and let him deal with it. Scarlet took a deep breath. Quinn, let me ask you something. Imagine you have a boyfriend, and he has an ex. If your boyfriend mentions her name in his sleep, even though she's no longer in his life, would you be upset? Quinn was smart. She immediately realized what had happened. She thought for a moment. Let me guess. You mentioned your ex-husband's name in your sleep, and Director Steele heard you. So now he's angry at you, right? I guess so. Scarlet reluctantly nodded. I know I don't love Jamie anymore, but I don't know why I still have dreams about him. When I heard that Director Steele and Yana went to lunch together, I didn't believe it at first. But now that seems to be the case. Quinn paused for a moment to collect her thoughts. Then she continued. Miss Sanders, I do not know about others, but if it were me, even if I didn't show it, I would still be upset. I think it is best if you speak with him about it. I don't think Oliver is the kind of person who's fond of creating drama. Furthermore, he has been pursuing you for so long. How could he stay angry at you if you talk with him and explain yourself? Scarlet felt slightly relieved after hearing Quinn's words. But she was still a bit skeptical. Really? Trust me on this, Quinn said. Then she moved closer to Scarlet's ear and whispered, and I promise that Director Steele is waiting for you to talk with him about it. Scarlet packed her things and nodded at her. I won't have lunch with you today. I understand, Miss Sanders. Quinn gave her a genuine smile. Go get your man back. After leaving Sanders holding, Scarlet drove straight to Tiffany's. The manager of the jewelry store quickly came up to her. Miss Sanders, we have completed your order. 
The diamond you brought the other day was cut and perfectly inlaid according to your specifications. Scarlet nodded and looked at the two rings she had custom ordered. The dark blue crystal sparkled with a mysterious and elegant light under the bright lights of the jewelry store. She slowly put one of the rings on her ring finger. It was just right. Thinking about what she would do later, Scarlet blushed slightly. She handed the manager the remaining ring. Can you please wrap this up for me? After exiting the jewelry shop, Scarlet drove the car toward Okeano's hotel. The moment she got out of the car, Sean ran to her side and whispered, I saw him go in with Yana. They're in a VIP room. Originally, I didn't want to let them use that room, but Philip allowed them. I had no choice. Hearing the hotel manager's words, Scarlet's heart softened, and she said to him gently, It's okay. They're just here to discuss official business. Huh. I hope that's the case. Looking at Yana's appearance and how she's acting around him, it seems that she has designs of her own. Scarlet, you should keep an eye on her. Scarlet thought of the items in her bag at this moment and said to Sean, I want you to prepare the private room beside them for me. Sean finally revealed a smile. Philip has already done that. I was wondering if you would come or not. Scarlet, are you serious about Director Steele? Yes. Scarlet nodded very seriously. If she was not sure at first, she was now certain who she wanted to be with. She knew she wanted to spend the rest of her life with him. Soon, she arrived at the private room. However, because the walls were soundproof, she could not hear what was going on in the adjacent room at all. She thought about it and quickly sent a text message to Oliver. Oliver, I'm in the private room next door. I want to give you a present. Can you come over? The message was ignored. Scarlet had expected this. She walked out of the room and randomly called a waiter. She handed something to him and gave him some instructions. When Yana left Sanders holding, she saw a silver gray Bentley waiting for her at the entrance. It was obviously Oliver's car. Her face was full of delight. She was about to follow Oliver and get into the car, but unexpectedly, after Oliver got into the car, he closed the door and drove off without waiting for her to get in. Her face froze slightly. She did not expect Oliver to be so rude, but she could only swallow her pride. She called her assistant to drive her to Okeano's hotel. Oliver was a distinguished man. There were very few men of his caliber. It was inevitable that he would be arrogant. Yana knew that a man like him had his own unique charm. If she could marry someone like him, Scarlet would never dare bother her again. Yana smiled. After getting into the car, she took out her makeup bag and put on some makeup. When she got out of the car, she saw Oliver waiting for her. She walked toward Oliver with a big, bright smile. Director Steele, let's go in. She knew how beautiful she looked when she smiled. When Oliver saw her, his eyes narrowed slightly, and he went inside. Yana realized at that moment that Oliver Steele was not going to be an easy catch, but she wasn't going to let that sway her from the path moment they sat down to eat, Oliver didn't smile even once. I heard that you like to golf. I also like it, Yana said cheerfully. My dad taught me. Perhaps one day we can go together. Oliver took out a cigarette and lit it. He glanced at her and said, I don't have much time these days. Yana was irritated, but she forced a smile. Oh, it's normal. You are busy. We can talk about it later. Director Steele, do you think Steele Enterprises is likely to work together with Sanders Holding on the Hanging Gardens project? The fact that Oliver personally came to Sanders Holding today indicated that he wanted them to be in charge of this project. Oliver drew deeply on his cigarette and released a long stream of white smoke through his lips. His posture was very casual, but he also looked composed. Yana's eyes flashed with fascination as she looked at him. Even if such a man wasn't wealthy, 
women would still fall for him. Yana was just about to continue talking about the Hanging Gardens project when Oliver's phone suddenly vibrated. He quickly took out his phone. Yana felt that his expression improved a lot upon reading the message he had just gotten. Facing her, however, he still looked indifferent. Director Steele, actually, I admire you a lot. Yana was starting to panic. She felt she had to speed up her steps. Otherwise, she wouldn't have a chance with him. She didn't want to lose all the progress she had made so far. She cleared her throat and revealed her most beautiful face in front of Oliver. She curled her fingers and hooked the hair on her cheek to the back of her ears. I... You look quite similar to your sister. Yana was just about to speak when Oliver suddenly interrupted her. He extinguished the cigarette but did not pick up any utensils. Yana laughed dryly. <laughs> Everyone says we look alike. Yana suddenly thought of Scarlet and Oliver living next to each other. The two of them must know each other. But that day in the elevator, seeing the two of them not greeting each other, it seemed like they had never met before. Her heart moved, and she said casually, Scarlet is my older sister. She married the head of Copart Industries, Jamie Walton, two years ago. However, I heard that she wasn't faithful to him, and the two got divorced recently. That's why she returned to Sanders' holding. If you ask me, however, I don't think my sister is the kind of person who cheats on her husband. So I don't think the rumors are true. Yana spoke with great skill. Not only did she make Scarlet sound like a cheater, but she also made herself look good by standing up for her. The expression on Oliver's face didn't change. However, at that moment, Yana noticed that his eyes had become colder. Yana bit her lips and said cautiously, Anyway, life is never smooth sailing, right? We all have problems. At this moment, someone suddenly knocked on the door of the private room. Yana frowned and said impatiently, Come in! A waiter came in with a tray. Yana saw the item on the tray and frowned even more. What is this? The waiter smiled at her apologetically and then walked toward Oliver. A lady wanted me to pass this to you. She said that she had just sent you a text message. Yana's brows twitched. She knew very well what a red velvet box like this would contain. She gritted her teeth in anger as she looked nervously at Oliver. Oliver had come personally to talk with her today. She took that as an expression of interest. She didn't expect that he would accept a gift from another woman while he was courting her. However, she was wrong. Although Oliver's expression was difficult to read, he still took the red velvet box. When the waiter saw Oliver take the box, he heaved a sigh of relief. The lady said she would wait for you. With that, he left. Yana was fuming at this moment. She did not know who could have known she was having lunch with Oliver at this place. Whoever it was, she had thrown a wrench at her plans. Yana clenched her hand into a fist and dug her nails into her palm. She pretended to be calm and asked Oliver, I wonder who knows that you're having lunch here. The love of my life. Oliver played with the velvet box and said casually, uh, What? Yana's voice suddenly rose. Sensing that she had lost her composure, Yana quickly recollected herself. How come she hadn't heard about this before? Didn't he say he was single? Also, if he wasn't interested in her, what was the point of all this? In an instant, too many question marks appeared in Yana's mind. She could no longer maintain that perfect smile. She said somewhat reluctantly, Are you joking? Oliver suddenly looked up. His dark eyes were expressionless as he looked at the woman in front of him. Do I look like I'm joking with you? Yana's face was stiff. I wonder if you're full, Oliver said as he stood up. He looked like he was ready to leave. He clearly did not intend to have lunch with her. Why did you come here if we weren't going to have lunch together? Yana's face turned red from embarrassment. 
When she saw the red velvet box in Oliver's hand, something flashed through her mind. She looked straight at Oliver. Unless you came here today to have lunch with someone else, right? Yana said, basically answering her own question. Oliver lit another cigarette. He did not say anything. His voice was cold and emotionless. I will work with Sanders Holding on the Hanging Gardens project. Yana was stunned. There were so many conflicting emotions in her heart. She didn't know if she should be angry at Oliver's offensive attitude or happy that Steel Enterprises was going to work with their company. Uh, that's good. That's... But you will not be in charge of the project. Oliver's next sentence made Yana lose her calm. Her face became distorted. Director Steele, did I do anything to upset you? Don't you think you're going a bit too far? Something to upset me? Oliver's eyes turned cold. He glanced at Yana as he headed out. I'm just very protective of my own people. Yana didn't understand what he meant by that, but her entire body was trembling. She did not expect today's lunch with him would end up like this. Yana did not know who had sabotaged her today, but whoever she was, she hated her with a passion. She thought of Oliver's words before he left. She replayed today's events in her mind. Had she done anything to offend him? What could have triggered him to humiliate her like this? In any case, she wasn't ready to give up just yet. Since he did not reveal the identity of that woman, it was likely that their relationship wasn't so stable. Yana figured he was probably just playing around. Once he got bored of her, he would move on to someone else. Yana suddenly thought of what the waiter said to Oliver. She said she would wait for you. There was a glint in Yana's eyes. As soon as Oliver left the room, he stopped and leaned against the wall to open the red velvet box the waiter had given him. As expected, there was a ring in the box. Suddenly, he realized that the diamond on the ring looked familiar. Oliver's eyes narrowed slightly, and he squinted to get a closer look. Those were the diamonds on the cufflinks he lost. Was Scarlet telling him that she had feelings for him after crying in his arms long ago? That was why she did not return the diamond cufflinks to him. She must have kept them because they reminded her of him. Oliver was upset at Scarlet today because while she was sleeping in his arms last night, she mumbled the name of another man. But when he heard Yana slandering her, he had to rise to her defense. He could not let Yana get away with it. Oliver tightened his grip on the exquisite ring and casually put it back in the box. He pushed open the door of the private room beside him. Inside, a woman was eating at a table full of food with her back to him. She seemed like she had quite an appetite. Oliver narrowed his eyes and entered. He pulled the chair beside her and sat down. Just as he was about to take out a cigarette, the woman reached over and snatched the cigarette from his hand. Scarlet's eyes were gentle when she saw his smiling eyes. She flashed her hand at him. Did you see the gift I sent you? Look, I have one too. I got it custom made. Now whoever sees me wearing this would know I am taken. Scarlet's words improved Oliver's mood, but his expression didn't change much. Scarlet was not discouraged. She took the red velvet box from his hand and grabbed Oliver's left hand. At first, Oliver's hand was still very stiff. But when Scarlet looked at him with her beautiful eyes, he could not take his hand away. Scarlet let out a sigh of relief. She took out the ring from the box and carefully put it on Oliver's ring finger. His fingers were very beautiful. They were long and slender, and their joints were distinct. Scarlet put the ring on him bit by bit. She was a little nervous. Oliver lowered his head and saw Scarlet's long eyelashes. Her forehead was unblemished, and her long curly hair was spread loosely on her shoulders. There was also a cautious expression on her face. When she was done, she raised her head. 
Oliver did not have time to look away. At this moment, the gentleness in his eyes was seen by the woman in front of him. Scarlet was stunned. She could not help hugging the man in front of her. She said in a muffled voice, Oliver, I admit I saw Jamie in a dream last night. I know you're unhappy today. Is that the reason? Oliver's body immediately turned stiff, and his face darkened. He wanted to push Scarlet away, but Scarlet hugged him even tighter. I don't know what I said last night, but I saw you too in the dream. You asked me if I still had feelings for Jamie. You asked me why I still saw him in my dreams. Scarlet spoke very quickly, as if she was afraid that Oliver would interrupt her. She said softly, But I told you, I don't like Jamie anymore. He doesn't mean anything to me. Scarlet's hands involuntarily tightened. If I could go back in time, I would wait until I meet you. But... She took a deep breath. Raising her head, she looked straight at Oliver. There was helplessness in her eyes. I cannot change the past. If you cannot get over this, I can give you some space for you to sort out your feelings. As she said the last sentence, Scarlet tightened her grip on Oliver's waist and then slowly let go. Oliver's expression changed when he heard her say, I can give you some space. He was calm, but it was like the calm before the storm. He narrowed his eyes and stared at her. You want to leave me? Scarlet shook her head bitterly. I did not say I wanted to leave you. I just want to give you some space if you... Scarlet, enough! Before Scarlet could say something that made him even angrier, Oliver suddenly cut her off. Scarlet's body stiffened. She raised her head and looked into Oliver's angry eyes. Then do you want me to leave? Oliver, don't you believe me? I don't love Jamie. Even if I saw him in a dream, I don't love him anymore. Oliver looked at her calm face and realized that what she had just said was just to provoke him. Knowing he would not let her leave, she deliberately said those words. Oliver took a deep breath. He had to make a decision. What was he going to do? Scarlet stared straight into his eyes. They were as calm and beautiful as the moon on an autumn night. There was not a trace of impatience in them. Just by looking at them, one felt hypnotized. Oliver forced himself to look away. Seeing his reaction, Scarlet was filled with bitterness. She hugged Oliver again and said, I can't bear to leave you. I want you to stay, Oliver. Oliver stiffened. Scarlet's eyes welled up. Suddenly, she leaned into him and kissed the corner of his mouth. Quinn asked me to explain things to you. She said you would understand. So, do you forgive me? She looked straight into Oliver's eyes. They were as cold and deep as they always were. But at this moment, she could tell there were many emotions raging behind those eyes. When Scarlet was in love with Jamie, she did all kinds of things for him. However, she had never been so gentle with him because he did not love her. She knew, however, that Oliver loved her, so she was always willing to go the extra mile for him. When she saw that Oliver did not respond, Scarlet's eyes gradually dimmed. She slowly let go of him and stood up. In an instant, just as she stood up, she was pulled down by the man in front of her and landed on his lap. One of his hands was around her waist and the other was around her shoulder. Scarlet sat down and looked up. She met a pair of extremely deep eyes. Scarlet, sometimes I really wish I had never met you, Oliver said, his expression as heavy as a storm. If he had never met her... He might have eventually found a woman who could help his career and married her. There wouldn't have been any love between them, but there wouldn't have been any drama either. But he had met Scarlet. Oliver lowered his head 
and passionately kissed Scarlet on the lips. Scarlet softly moaned and hugged Oliver's neck, offering no resistance. His eyes were gloomy, his hand tightly wrapped around her waist. He pressed it into his body as if he wanted to merge her to himself. Neither of them could tell how long they kissed. Scarlet was short of breath when Oliver finally let her go. Her face had already turned red. She panted heavily and buried her face in Oliver's neck. His chest was firm and always gave her a great sense of security. She said in a low voice, Then do you forgive me? Oliver's eyes darkened, but he tightened his grip on the woman in his arms. After a long silence, he said in a hoarse voice, Stay away from your ex from now on. Don't talk to him or get involved with him. Scarlet knew that there were some things that she could not control, but she did not want to anger the man in front of her at this time. She obediently nodded. Okay. Don't think about him anymore. Don't let him enter your dreams again. Oliver's demands were getting more and more unreasonable. Scarlet still obediently nodded her head. I won't think about him anymore. I never thought about him in the first place. If he shows up in my dream again, I'll tell him, you shall not pass. And if he enters my dream regardless, I'll kick him out. Is this okay? Oliver's expression gradually became better, but his face was still expressionless. Scarlet's heart finally relaxed. She pressed her face against Oliver's chest. No matter how domineering and powerful Oliver was, there were times when he was actually quite childish. The two of them leaned against each other. The atmosphere gradually became more relaxed and warm. Scarlet did not want to eat anymore. Upon looking at the ring on her left hand, her heart suddenly felt soft. Oliver, you are so much better than Jamie. You're better than him in everything. Why are you afraid that I still like that man and not you? Scarlet whispered. Oliver lowered his head. There was no expression on his face. However, his eyes were deep and dark. He stared straight into Scarlet's eyes. She did not know why, but it was as if her heart was grabbed by something. Scarlet, he said in a low voice. She did not say anything. She just bit her lips. Oliver's eyes became even darker. Then he kissed her on the lips again. She felt her heart beat faster. Moments later, she couldn't take it anymore, and she threw caution to the wind. When they left the private room, Oliver looked more relaxed. Scarlet could not help but glare at him when she saw that he still had a cold expression on his face. What's wrong? Do you still want to? Oliver turned his head and whispered in her ear. Oliver's voice was very pleasant to hear. Scarlet suddenly remembered the way one of her colleagues described an actor with a beautiful voice. Just hearing his voice will make you pregnant. Scarlet always thought that comment was silly, until she heard Oliver whisper in her ear. We're no longer in the private room. Scarlet hurriedly turned her head away. Her face was red from blushing. Suddenly, he pulled her into his arms. Scarlet struggled, but did not break free and let him do as he pleased. She was half carried and half pulled out of Okeano's hotel by Oliver. On the way out, Scarlet could still see Sean blanking at her and grinning. She could not help but glare at him. After that, Sean coughed dryly and pretended to be busy doing something else. The valet quickly brought Oliver's silver-gray Bentley to the entrance. He opened the passenger seat and waited until Scarlett got into the car. Then he walked around the car and got into the driver's seat. Oliver closed the door and stared straight at Scarlett with his indifferent eyes. He did not speak, and his thin lips were slightly pursed. Scarlet did not react at first, and then understood what the man beside her meant. She suddenly leaned over and kissed Oliver's thin lips. 
She then returned to her seat and sat down primly, as if nothing had happened. Seeing him look at her with a smile that was not a smile, she pretended to be calm and asked him, Aren't you leaving? Oliver looked at her and chuckled. A trace of gentleness finally flowed through his eyes. He did not say anything. He started the engine and drove away. Neither saw a woman emerged from behind a large basin of pine trees nearby. The woman was beautiful, but at this moment, her delicate face was distorted. Yana finally understood what Oliver meant when he said he was protective of his people. She did not expect that he was in a relationship with Scarlet. She understood now that it was Scarlet who made Oliver cut short his lunch with her. Scarlet. Scarlet. Well played. No wonder she seemed unaffected after her divorce from Jamie. After monkey branching to a better, wealthier man, she had all but forgotten the one she used to love. No wonder she returned to Sanders' holding with such confidence. Yana was so angry that her hands were shaking. Very quickly, she took out her phone and dialed a number. Once the call was connected, she snarled. Why didn't you tell me? When she said that, she suddenly stopped. How could a man like Oliver fall for a woman so easily? And not just any woman, but someone who just recently got divorced. Perhaps he was just fooling around. That would explain why he didn't want the relationship to be public. In an instant, many thoughts passed through Yana's mind. The person on the other side asked her calmly, I won't tell you what. Yana was so furious, she coldly said, Nothing. Adriana, you and I are now allies on the same side. I hope you don't hide anything from me. Don't forget, our common enemy is now Scarlet. If you want to secure your marriage and your position in Copart Industries, you should help me secure my position in Sanders Holding and take down Scarlet. This will be beneficial to you. On the other hand, Adriana, who was upset with Jeannie over a small matter, felt even more irritated after hearing Yana's words. I did not hide anything from you, Yana. But you... It doesn't matter now. As you said, right now, we are allies, of course. Yana, deal with Scarlet quickly. If we tarry too long, she might become too dangerous. We cannot allow her to undermine everything we have achieved. Yana's face darkened. She wanted to say something, but Adriana immediately hung up the phone. Adriana had gotten married to the head of Copart Industries, just as she wanted. Her life, however, did not follow the path she had imagined. When Copart Industries was facing financial difficulties, Jeannie had supported Adriana's marriage to Jamie. But now that the company was no longer in danger, Jeannie was becoming more and more demanding and judgmental. She would criticize her spending habits. She would point out when some place around the house was dirty or she wore something she didn't like. Adriana, of course, knew Jamie's mother didn't like her from the start. However, she thought that with time, she would get used to her. She did not expect that Jeannie's attitude would become worse with time. Thinking about everything bothering her, Adriana sighed and tossed the phone onto the sofa. Just at this moment, her phone started ringing. She was annoyed and did not want to pick it up, but her ringtone was loud. Very quickly, Jeannie came in with an irritated look on her face. She looked down at her with cold eyes. If you don't want to answer the phone, then turn it off. Don't you know that I'm used to taking a nap in the afternoon? Adriana's body stiffened, and the corner of her mouth twitched. Uh, sorry, I'll put it on silent. Jeannie turned around and slammed the door behind her. Adriana frowned. When Jeannie needed her help, she was so gentle and kind. Now that the crisis Copart Industries was in had been resolved, her attitude changed. Jeannie kept behaving as if she was the one who had done her a favor. Adriana took the phone and glanced at the caller ID. 
When she saw the number, her body suddenly froze. She took the phone and hurriedly walked outside. Jeannie saw her leaving the room and did not miss the flustered expression on her face. Her eyes narrowed shrewdly. It was just a phone call. Why did Adriana go out to answer it? Moments later, Adriana's phone started ringing again. Whoever was calling her was pretty persistent. This time, Adriana took a deep breath and quickly answered the phone. A sinister male voice immediately came from the other side. Adriana, you've been away for so long. Have you found someone else? Why aren't you answering my calls? Adriana trembled. Then she collected herself and pretended to be cold. Mr. Vanderbilt, I broke up with you before I left. I hope that you don't call me again. This is inconvenient for me. Ha! Huh. There seemed to be a woman's coquettish voice coming from the other side. Adriana knew what was going on over there, and hearing it made her feel disgusted. However, she bit her lips and did not directly hang up the phone. Inconvenient. Looks like you found another man. When you came back to me then, I did not reject you. Now that you've found someone richer, you want to leave? You haven't even asked me if I will allow that. Edward Vanderbilt's ruthless voice came, accompanied by the sounds the woman with him was making. Adriana's expression changed slightly, and she took a deep breath. She softened her tone. Edward, you promised me back then that you would introduce me to your family and marry me. I was with you for more than a year, and you didn't do that. I love you, but I can't bear to share you with another woman. You love me? He snorted as if he had just heard a joke. It just so happens that I'm coming to L.A. at the end of the month. I would like to see how much you love me when I'm there. And with that, he hung up the phone. Adriana felt a chill come all over her body. Edward could be so gentle and ruthless. When she first sought him out, she did so partly because she was helpless and partly because she had some fantasies. She did not know back then that he had commitment issues and the strangest kinks in the bedroom. If he came to L.A. Who was that just now? A voice suddenly came from the side. Adriana felt goosebumps on the back of her neck. She turned around and saw Jeannie looking at her expressionlessly. She forced a smile. Weren't you taking an afternoon nap? Jeannie did not seem to hear her words and stared straight at Adriana. Are you feeling guilty? Who are you talking to just now? Guilty? Adriana pretended to be calm and looked at Jeannie with a smile. I just didn't want to wake you up. That was just a friend from abroad. She's coming to L.A. next month, so she asked me if we could meet sometime. Friend? Jeannie noticed how stiff Adriana seemed as she spoke. She pulled the corner of her mouth. What's your friend's name? Hearing Jeannie's inquisitive tone, Adriana's forced smile immediately disappeared. She looked straight into Jeannie's eyes. She was really fed up with her making her life difficult. She said, Don't you believe me? Since I married Jamie, I will not do anything that will let him down. You don't need to breathe down my neck all the time. If we're at odds, it will only make Jamie uncomfortable. Jeannie did not care much about what Adriana said except for the last part. Now that Adriana had married her son, if the two of them did not get along, Jamie would not be happy. Actually, Jeannie's attitude toward her daughter-in-law had significantly changed recently. This all began when Jeannie started spending more time with her friends at the beauty salon. After their company's crisis was resolved, Jeannie started to spend more time with her friends again. They were all rich, and they flaunted their wealth. All their kids had rich and gorgeous spouses as well. In the past, Jeannie did not really care about it. But after Jamie divorced Scarlett and married Adriana, she started to care what her friends thought about her and her family. One time, in order to make herself look better, 
Ginny told her friends, Adriana is so well connected. She has friends among the Vanderbilts and is on good terms with Steel Enterprises. In fact, when Copart Industries was facing financial difficulties, Adriana found a buyer for our company's assets in the San Francisco project. When she told them that, her friends praised Adriana and Jeannie's good fortune in having such a great daughter-in-law. She was so happy with the reaction until one of her friends pointed something out. That doesn't sound right. Didn't Steel Enterprises publicly cancel Adriana's endorsement? They even said that they would never work with her again. How could she be on good terms with them? Jeannie was stunned. Jamie had told her that Adriana was on good terms with Steel Enterprises. She did not know that Adriana's endorsement had been cancelled by Steel Enterprises. She was so embarrassed. She sounded like a braggart and a liar in front of her friends. While she was still in the washroom, she overheard her friends talking behind her back. Poor Mrs. Walton. She had such a great daughter-in-law. How could she let her son get divorced and marry a skank who just knows how to eat, drink, and play the piano? That's right. She even lied to her mother-in-law, saying that she had a good relationship with Steel Enterprises. As for finding a buyer for Copart Industries properties at the San Francisco project, God knows whom she seduced in order to get that deal. That last statement pierced Jeannie's heart. Jeannie gritted her teeth. Had she made the biggest mistake of her life? She had never liked Adriana from the beginning, and as time had passed, she thought even less of her. Jeannie frowned at her now, but Adriana did not seem to have any patience left. She walked past her and entered the house. Jeannie narrowed her eyes and pursed her lips. She could barely suppress her annoyance, but she did not want to put Jamie in a difficult position. However, Jeannie promised herself that if Adriana ever hurt her son again, there would be hell to pay. After Adriana hung up the phone, Yana didn't look happy. She knew what kind of person Adriana was. She knew she wasn't trustworthy. But at this time, they had a common enemy. And the enemy of an enemy was a friend. At this point, it would be unwise to quarrel with her. Just thinking of Scarlett and Oliver together made her furious. Oliver dropped off Scarlett near Sanders' holding. Scarlett took a long time to unfasten her seatbelt. She dawdled and glanced at the man beside her from time to time. Thinking about the relationship that had just been established, Scarlett bit her lips. After unfastening her seatbelt, she took the initiative to lean over and kiss Oliver. Come and pick me up tonight, okay? Oliver turned his head and raised his eyebrows to look at her. Aren't you afraid others would see you with me? Scarlet knew that he was saying it on purpose. She reached over and pulled his hand and placed it on her heart. So what if they see us? Anyway, they'll know that you're mine sooner or later. Oliver's expression relaxed. He pulled her head and kissed her on the forehead. I don't know my schedule for tonight. If something comes up, I'll have Carl pick you up. All right, Scarlet nodded. She looked at the ring on her left hand. Her heart softened, and she got out of the car. Seeing Oliver drive away, Scarlet then walked towards Sanders Holding with a joyful heart. To her surprise, she bumped into Yana, who seemed to have been waiting there the whole time. Scarlet pretended not to see her and walked toward the company. She did not want her good mood to be ruined. However, just because she wanted to be left in peace did not mean others would oblige. Yana walked quickly to intercept Scarlet and block her way. She looked up and down at Scarlet with a mocking smile. Sis, you seem much better at seducing people than before. But be careful. When you go for someone so out of your league, it's only a matter of time before he dumps you. After saying that, she turned around with a cold smile and gracefully walked toward the company. Scarlet looked at her walking away and her brows furrowed. Yana clearly had something to say. She knew that she was together with Oliver. 
So was she angry at her? Or jealous of her? Scarlet's mouth also curled into a mocking smile. Whether Yana knew did not matter to her for a simple reason. Scarlet knew well that Yana had taken a liking to Oliver. Therefore, she would not tell Harold about her relationship with Oliver because it would not benefit her at all. Besides, at this point, she did not care if both Yana and her father found out that she was with Oliver. So discretion be damned, Scarlet thought. After Oliver drove away from Sanders holding, he had a slight smile on his face. Scarlet's attempt to please him today had undoubtedly worked. Looking at the diamond ring on his left hand, he suddenly pulled over to the side of the road so he could have a moment to think. He then took out his phone and took a picture of the ring on his finger. Afterward, he posted the picture as a status update on his WhatsApp profile with the following tagline. Although it's a little ugly, I'll still wear it. After the picture was posted, the comments started coming in. Gareth, beautiful ring. This must be from Scarlet, right? Oliver, yes. Gareth, it seems like Scarlet really loves you. I've never seen a woman give her man a ring. Scarlet's quite an unconventional woman. Oliver smiled as he read Gareth's comment. Did she love him so much? He looked at the ring on his finger again and raised his eyebrows, pretending to be indifferent. Wasn't it just a ring? Or did it stand for something more, as Gareth pointed out? Although he couldn't decide, his mood was much better either way. In the afternoon, Carl came to tell him that UCLA was going to hold a youth conference tomorrow. The chancellor of the university had sent an invitation to Oliver. In fact, most of the invitations were sent to successful alumni of UCLA. Oliver, however, was sent an invitation because he was looked up to as a role model by many budding businessmen and entrepreneurs. Usually, Carl would not send letters like this to him. But today, Oliver tossed away the pen in his hand. He raised his head and looked at the secretary in front of him. What's special about this invitation? Oliver usually held a cigarette between his right index finger and middle finger when he was working. When he was writing, he would put the cigarette butt between his thin lips. Today, he picked up a cigarette with his left hand. After spitting out his question, he picked up the cigarette and put it between his lips. Carl had sharp eyes. He noticed the ring on Oliver's left hand. He immediately understood why his boss was in a good mood this afternoon. He hurriedly said, UCLA is Mrs. Sanders' alma mater. She was invited as an outstanding designer. I've also heard that Mr. Walton of Copart Industries was also invited. Oliver said with disdain, So the CEO of a company that was just on the brink of bankruptcy is considered successful these days. Carl chuckled. Then he remembered he was standing in the presence of his boss and bit his tongue. Although he didn't show it, Oliver believed that Jamie was indeed fairly successful as a businessman. As for his character, he found him despicable. So? Carl asked tentatively. Would you like to accept the invitation? Oliver narrowed his eyes and quickly stubbed out his cigarette in the ashtray. Cancel all my appointments for tomorrow. Led a new task. To work on the Sundial Bridge project and win the bid for it. The Sundial Bridge project was an important project on par with the Hanging Gardens project in the second half of the year. Sanders Holding attached great importance to it. At night, without waiting for Oliver's call, she took the initiative to call him. She told him that she would have to work overnight tonight and might come home late. When Oliver received the call, he was already waiting for Scarlet near Sanders Holding. He leaned against the car door and smoked casually. He was dressed in an impeccably tailored suit. The buttons on the front of the suit were open, revealing the white shirt inside. This gave him a slightly rebellious look and made his handsome face look even more attractive. His appearance attracted the attention of many employees from Sanders Holding on their way out. When Yana appeared at the front door, several employees from the same department smiled at her. 
Miss Sanders, Director Steele has come to pick you up personally. Are you guys together? Another colleague quickly answered. Apart from Miss Sanders, who else is worthy of a man like Director Steele? This sentence deeply pleased Yana. She smiled at them pleasantly. Don't jinx it. It's not certain yet. When they heard her cagey answer, they laughed. Miss Sanders, take the initiative. Nowadays, men prefer bold, confident women. That applies even more to a cosmopolitan man like Oliver Steele. Yana's heart moved. Thinking of Scarlet's bold behavior toward that man at noon today, she narrowed her eyes. She said to her colleagues, You guys go first. I still have some matters to attend to. Once the others left, Yana did not walk directly to Oliver. Instead, she quickly returned to the underground parking lot and got into her red sports car. She knew very well that Scarlet could not be with Oliver tonight, and she had a plan. Oliver heard Scarlet's words and extinguished the cigarette. He did not tell her he was already in front of Sanders' holding. He put one hand in his pocket and slightly raised his head to look at the floor where Scarlet was. What time did you get off work tonight? Scarlet looked at the pile of documents in front of her. I'm not sure yet. About 10 or 11, probably? Oliver hummed in acknowledgement. All right, let me know and I'll pick you up when you're done. His voice was low and deep, but Scarlet could hear a trace of gentleness in his voice, and she smiled. Actually, you don't need to come to pick me up. It will be late. I can return by myself. Oliver was also very busy. He did not have time to argue, and he was a man of his word. Call me when you're done, Oliver repeated. His voice brooked no argument. Scarlet felt happy that Oliver cared about her so much to come to pick her up from work late at night. She nodded. Okay. After talking for a while, the two of them hung up. After talking with Scarlet, Oliver got into the car. He paused for a while to think, then called Gareth. He asked where they were and then drove straight to Oasis, his friend's regular haunt. Behind him, a red sports car was tailing him. The red sports car was hardly inconspicuous. Oliver noticed it in the rearview mirror and knew it was following him. As a proud lion being eyed by a hyena, Oliver didn't show any reaction. Instead, he casually took out a cigarette. When Oliver arrived at Oasis, his friends were already there. As soon as Gareth saw him, he said with a jubilant smile, Oliver, to what do we owe the pleasure? Let me guess, Scarlet is busy tonight, so your friends came to mind. The corner of Oliver's mouth curled up into a smile. He put the cigarette butt on his thin lips and looked at Gareth from the corner of his eyes. I have been doing well recently, but I thought I might as well come here and make a bit more. You know, baby formula is quite expensive these days. Baby formula? Gareth looked at Oliver in shock. Are you and Scarlet going to have a child? Eventually. Oliver smiled casually. The way things between you and Scarlet are going, I wouldn't be surprised if that eventually comes up sooner than anyone expects. Hank smiled. Anyway, let's have dinner. Then you'll have a chance to save up for baby formula. The four of them sat down, ate dinner, then moved over to the card table. While they were playing, Liam received a message on his phone. He then raised his head and looked at Oliver with a frown. Oliver, I've just got word that Jamie is looking into the purchase of his company's assets in the San Francisco project. He's trying to figure out the identity of the buyer. Hearing Liam's words, Gareth pursed his lips and flung a card on the table. So what if he knows? Can he still buy it back? Liam and Hank frowned. Oliver's eyes narrowed slightly. Gareth stopped talking. He suddenly thought of the trap they had set up back then. Hank broke the silence first and looked at Oliver. Oliver, do you think he suspects something? Oliver had gone to such great lengths to get Scarlet. The purchase of the San Francisco projects from Copart Industries, reopening the case of Bloomingdale Bridge. Oliver was the hidden hand that set those events in motion. Oliver sneered. 
What a clown, he said coldly. Seeing his reaction, his friends heaved a sigh of relief. Oliver's calm demeanor signaled to them that he was confident that no matter what Jamie tried to pull off at this point, he wouldn't be able to win Scarlet back. At that moment, Oliver placed his hand flat on the table. The ring he was wearing did not escape their notice. It was the same ring in the photo that he posted on WhatsApp that afternoon. There was more, Liam said. My driver told me that while passing by the Steele family villa last night, he saw a black Lamborghini parked there by the side of the road. There was a person inside. He didn't come out of the car. He just kept staring at the villa. From the driver's description, I'm pretty sure the man in the car was Jamie Walton. Oliver held a few cards in his left hand. His right index and middle fingers were slightly bent. He lightly tapped the table with his hand. For a moment, the air was a little heavy. Leak out the news that Steel Enterprises has properties in the San Francisco project. Invite merchants to move in and set up shop. Oliver spoke with determination, but his expression was indifferent. He suddenly threw away his cards and stood up from his chair. He casually took his suit jacket from the side and said, As an incentive, offer the merchants who move in quickly a three-year fixed-rate contract. Oliver's friends were shocked. They looked at each other. They were afraid that Oliver was going to regret that decision. Are you leaving? Gareth asked with disappointment in his voice. The man who used to stay up with them until one or two after midnight had suddenly turned into a family man. Scarlet is still at the company. I'm gonna pick her up. Oliver put out his cigarette and walked out of the private room. Gareth, Hank, and Liam looked at each other and raised their eyebrows. It was a little cold in the early autumn night. Oliver casually put on his jacket as he was about to leave Oasis. The valet had already brought Oliver's car to the club entrance. When he saw him come out, he quickly gave him back his keys. When Oliver took the keys, he saw something from the corner of his eyes. His eyes narrowed slightly, and his heart moved. He was not in a hurry to leave. Oasis was located in an old building surrounded by a wide variety of colorful flowers. Leaning against the wall of the building, Oliver took out a cigarette and lit it. He was tall and straight. He was dressed in a suit, which made him stand out from the other guys entering the club. He looked composed and reserved, and his facial features were handsome. At this moment, his face was slightly obscured by the curling smoke. If someone had taken his picture at that moment and put it on the cover of a fashion magazine, it would not have looked out of place. Yana's heart was beating like a fawn's as she looked at him. Oliver was indeed an extraordinary man. She was afraid if she let him get away, she would never be able to find another man who had status, wealth, and looks at the same time. Seeing him like this made her even more determined than before. She clenched her fists and got out of the car. After hesitating for a moment, she smiled gently and walked toward him. As she stood before him, Oliver placed the cigarette butt between his thin lips. He extended his hand elegantly and said, Saw you following me in that red sports car the entire way from Sanders Holding. If you want to go unnoticed, you should drive something less flashy. His voice was low and cold. Clearly, he already knew that she was following him. Yana's heart skipped a beat. She carefully looked at Oliver's expression and did not see any disgust on his face. Only then did she feel relieved. The smile on her face became even more tender. Director Steele, there's a misunderstanding. I just wanted to come to Oasis. When I saw you from afar, I was wondering if that was really you. Really? Oliver turned his head and looked at her with a smile that was not a smile. There was a hint of mockery on his face. All right. Now you have seen that it's really me. You can turn around and leave. Yana's body stiffened. Of course, she did not want to leave now. She quickly changed the topic. Director Steele, you seem to be a bit drunk. You cannot drive under the influence. So how about I take you home? 
when she approached Oliver, she smelt the faint smell of alcohol on his body. Yana felt ecstatic. She figured that while Oliver was under the influence of alcohol, he would be much easier to seduce. Yana's eyes were very similar to Scarlett's. She stared unblinkingly at the man in front of her, then fluttered her eyelashes flirtatiously. Oliver's face, however, remained impassive. Do you often take strange men home? Oliver asked casually. Yana's expression changed. I was just offering to help. Thinking of something, Yana softened her expression. Director Steele, do you think I would say this to another man? I assure you, I am not that kind of woman. After Yana finished speaking, she took a step forward. Her watery eyes stared straight at Oliver. Oliver snapped the stem of a nearby flower in half. He then removed the cigarette butt from his thin lips and lightly flicked it on the tarmac. He suddenly laughed, but there was no hint of warmth in his laughter. So you like me? If any other man said this, it would definitely have made Yana feel arrogant and disgusted. But when Oliver said this, it only made her feel uncomfortable. Her white teeth bit her lips, and her face was already red. She secretly glanced at the man in front of her, then lowered her head. She softly hummed in acknowledgement. She lowered her head and did not see the mockery in the man's eyes. When she looked up again, Oliver drew deep on the cigarette in his hand. What can you do for me? He glanced at the stunned Yana and then said faintly, You know I'm already seeing someone, yet here you are. So I take it you have something to offer me. Of course I do, Yana said without thinking. At that moment, her heart started to beat wildly. Yana thought Oliver was just fooling around with Scarlet. Once someone came along who could offer him more, he would surely dump her. Yana could already imagine Scarlet being dumped once again. The corner of her mouth slowly rose, and her eyes were filled with pride. I will inherit Sanders' holding in the future. Director Steele, you can surely see the benefit of merging the capital of Sanders' holding with that of Steele Enterprises. That's all? Oliver's mouth twitched. He flicked his cigarette again and looked away. Yana's heart tightened. Other than Sanders' holding, she had nothing to offer. But perhaps... I wonder if Director Steele has heard of the San Francisco Project. I will own almost 40% of the San Francisco Project and half of the shares of Okeano's Hotel. Hmm. Huh. That sounds good. Oliver casually extinguished the cigarette and snapped another flower branch. When he turned around, his eyes were full of undisguised mockery. It's just that you have siblings. Not to mention... When he said this, he deliberately paused. Sure enough, he saw Yana's eyes were filled with anxiety. From what I've heard, your mother's about to give birth to a boy. Under these circumstances, how can you claim that you'll inherit all of that? His face also darkened. Yana was stunned. Then she became a little anxious. Without thinking, she grabbed Oliver's forearm. Being grabbed by the woman in front of him, Oliver's face darkened and he shook off her hand. When he did that, Yana faltered. She accidentally stepped out of her high heels and onto the flower bed. Immediately, she felt a sharp pain in her foot. Her face turned pale. Seeing Oliver about to leave, she hurriedly cried out, Director Steele, what I said is true. In the future, Sanders' holding will be mine. Trust me. What about your brother? Yana's eyes flashed and she bit her lips. Trust me, Sanders' holding will be all mine. No one will share it with me. How could she be so sure about it? Would Sanders' holding only be Yana's in the future? Oliver's back was facing Yana, and his unfathomable eyes flashed with some emotions. He did not say anything and walked straight ahead. Yana was stunned. In the next moment, Oliver had already gotten into his silver-gray Bentley. Hey! Director Steele! Director Steele! Wait for me! 
Director Steele! Yana wanted to run after Oliver's car, but he drove very fast. She had barely run two meters when Oliver's car turned around a corner. Yana ran two steps. Beside her, a waiter came rushing to her. Miss, your shoes. Yana was exasperated as she went back to pick up her shoes. She felt so humiliated and could not do anything but kick the ground in frustration and return to her car. Was she going to admit defeat or concoct a better plan to ensnare the legendary Oliver Steele? While Oliver was driving, he took out his phone and called Gareth. As soon as Gareth picked up, Oliver said, Investigate Yana's mother. Her name is Penelope Sanders. I want to know everything about her pregnancy. Gareth was on speaker mode. The other two also heard him. Hank smiled. I was wondering why Oliver was speaking to that woman at the door. I think he went to get some information. Oliver did not have any expression on his face. He knew from his conversation with Yana that she was up to something. He had to find out what it was since it could affect Scarlet. It is said that Harold's wife is pregnant with a male child. Knowing Harold's cunning, I don't think it's possible that he was duped. Liam interrupted. Of course, Oliver thought of that as well, but he still sensed something was wrong. He narrowed his eyes and said, Check her recent diet and life. There will be some clues. When Scarlet finished working, it was already 10 o'clock. She stretched and felt that her waist was very sore. She stood up and walked to the French window overlooking the traffic below. The night in LA was very beautiful. The entire city was lit up with neon lights. It was a sight to behold. At that moment, the phone vibrated. She checked it while drinking a glass of milk. It was a message from Oliver. He asked her if she was done with her work. She noticed that Oliver did not call her directly. Instead, he sent her a message so as not to disturb her in case she was focused on her work. Thinking about how considerate he was, Scarlet's heart warmed, and she immediately called him. Hello? Are you done for today? Oliver asked. Yes. Scarlet nodded and finished the rest of the hot milk. She turned around and went back to the chair to pack her things. You... Are you here to pick me up? What do you think? Oliver asked in an amused tone. Scarlet instantly felt her fatigue disappear. The corner of her mouth rose. She quickly packed her things and walked toward the elevator. When she was in the elevator, she tidied her clothes. The moment she stepped out of Sanders' holding, she saw a man standing not far away. Oliver was leaning against the car looking like a roguish movie star. He was wearing a white shirt with two buttons on the collar. The cuffs of his left hand were turned, and his index and middle fingers were holding a cigarette. As the white smoke swirled around him, his eyes became even darker. As if sensing her gaze, Oliver raised his head and looked straight at her. The corner of his thin lips rose slightly, and he directly extinguished the cigarette in his hand. Under Oliver's gaze, Scarlet blushed. She walked up to him and asked, Why didn't you call me when you came? You must have been waiting here for a long time, right? The text message was sent half an hour ago. Scarlet noticed four cigarette butts near his feet. It's not been long. Oliver curled his thin lips and opened the door to the passenger seat. Scarlet wanted to get in, but Oliver suddenly hugged her and kissed her on the forehead. Scarlet was stunned and looked at Oliver's pair of bottomless black eyes. The eyes of the man in front of her seemed to have magic. Every time she looked in, she felt she could not get out. After the two of them got in the car, Oliver started the engine and drove away. Scarlet had just gotten into the car when she found a few beautiful flowers under the windshield in front of her. She was a little surprised. She took one and looked at it and put one under her nostrils to smell it. Do you like it? Oliver asked gently. I like it. 
Scarlet took the two remaining flowers and placed them close to her chest. Are these for me? Who else would they be for? Oliver saw the smile on Scarlet's face, and his heart softened. He kept his left hand on the steering wheel and placed his free hand on Scarlet's left hand. When he felt Scarlet's ring on his palm, he squeezed her hand affectionately. Although Scarlet was holding the flowers carefully, a thorn on the flower stem pricked Oliver's hand. Glancing at the man driving beside her, Scarlet suddenly turned over the hand that was holding hers to examine it. As if he knew her intentions, Oliver tried to pull his hand away, but she did not let him. Seeing his beautiful hand had been pricked, Scarlet looked downcast. Sorry, I was not careful. Her voice was filled with worry, so Oliver did not take his hand away and said with a smile, It's nothing. Does it hurt? Her innocent expression revealed the pain and anxiety underneath. This made Oliver's heart tighten. He suddenly stepped on the brakes and pulled over to the side of the road. Oliver unfastened his seatbelt, leaned forward, and kissed Scarlet's lips. Scarlet wrapped her arms around the neck of the man in front of her. Oliver suddenly pulled away his lips and whispered into her ear, Scarlet, let's have a baby. When she heard Oliver's words, she was stunned and immediately buried her face in his chest. She said softly, Okay. Scarlet felt ready to have a child with Oliver. Thinking about what the child would be like, Scarlet felt happy and content. When Oliver heard Scarlet's reply, he smiled and hugged her even tighter. Both of them couldn't believe that they had decided to have a baby.